Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday the 27th of May 2016. Topic of the day, 91L off the southeast coast here between Bermuda and the Bahamas. Starting to get a little bit better organized, but I think that's even stretching it a bit. You can look at the satellite picture here. Uh, large area of general rotation down here, counterclockwise flow. Yeah, there are a few banding structures to the clouds down here, but this is certainly not a rapidly organizing system, and probably when it's all said and done, won't be much more than a nuisance. And that can be a big deal. People have plans to visit the beaches down here, and they just assume something like this not come their way. Unfortunately, it looks like it's going to try to do that over the next few days. This is what it looked like yesterday. I just wanted to compare between yesterday and today in the 850 vorticity chart. In other words, how much spin and organization there is in the atmosphere. There it is there yesterday, nice and round overall. Here's what it looks like today. And it's a little bit more oblong shape, got a little bit more of the lobes of energy uh, on the sides here. So it's not doing great and we can clearly see that on the satellite picture previously uh, but this just reinforces that that the organization the bundling of the energy really hasn't come into focus yet and that's good news so that it won't intensify very much upper level winds still pretty sharp uh, with this trough in here and then lower shear values again it's a complicated weather pattern overall uh, a little bit of a backing of the upper level winds to more favorable over the system now but this is only marginal it's not the best setup we've ever seen and you can also see even just in this satellite picture there is some mid-level dry air off to the north and west and so another reason to believe that this won't go on to be very strong and again it should be just a, a nuisance and um, a pain in the neck the uh, forecast here from the ship's intensity model statistical hurricane intensity prediction scheme looking at the shear values yesterday they were in the single digits dropping down to about four knots over the next several days and now you can see here on this row uh, going through 72 hours there's one single digit right there at nine knots but everything else still fairly high shear values um, so you know again this is uh, showing you what it is. This is as real as it gets here. You know, we're not going to make a mountain out of a molehill. Uh, not trying to downplay it either, but the evidence strongly suggests that this isn't going to be a very big deal. Now, the one thing in its favor for sure would be the warm water temperatures of the Gulf Stream here, which will be in between our system, which is way down here now. And if it comes up towards the South Carolina coast in some fashion, it will cross this warm water that is in the low 80s, 80, 81, 82 degrees in some locations. But the upper, the upper, the upper ocean heat content values are still fairly low overall. I mean, it's only late May. It's not like it's September, so that's not a surprise. Looking at the tracks for what it's worth, the different plots. Uh, this coming from NCAR, National Center for Atmospheric Research, a wonderful site for these plots and you can see generally speaking uh, the, if you had to draw a cone in here if you will you know towards the Carolina coast uh, more likely South Carolina the north but it looks like this could come in and then kind of meander a little bit so it could be a wet weekend off and on a little breezy the surf chopped up a little bit more so so be careful out there I'm actually more worried about the surf conditions because a lot of people are going to be hitting the water for the first time. Big Memorial Day weekend, my office is here in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I saw a lot of traffic heading out to Riceville Beach during lunch hour today. A lot of traffic on Eastwood Road here, Highway 74 East. If you know the area, you know what I'm talking about. People making a beeline towards the beautiful Riceville Beach area down to Carolina Beach. And the same will hold true for Myrtle Beach, South Carolina and the Isle of Palms off of Charleston, etc. And uh, you just have to really be careful and respect the fact that increased rip currents, even if it's just a minor increase, please be careful out there. We want you back to be able to watch 
when we really have something to talk about. Not that this isn't, but this is just kind of a warm-up, I think, for what's coming. We'll talk about that in a minute. A couple of interesting graphics that I can show. The HWARF uh, Hurricane Weather Research Forecast Model. Uh, interesting in the plots that we can get out there on the Internet these days. Uh, this shows the GFS, Operational GFS, and the HWARF in purple, and the Operational GFDL in green. And you can see that for the most part, they're all on top of each other. There's not much divergence in the tracks. And the intensity uh, forecast, I think I have that here better defined. Uh, really not much indication that this is going to do more than become a weak tropical storm. I mean, most of the guidance is south of the tropical storm line, if you will. Another way to put it, below tropical storm strength is what I'm saying here. Uh, I think they talk about that in economics, right? North of the line and south of the line, right? A, a stock goes north, it's climbing. And if it goes south, it's tanking. So in this case, the forecast for the stock of 91L, most of the guidance here indicates tanking. Um, and that's good. We don't need anything major coming along at any time, but certainly not Memorial Day weekend. If this does develop interesting products here, again, from the H Wharf, talking about impacts, here it would be the Carolina coastline. And uh, these rain amounts are respectable. I think this is a little far inland, uh, almost back to the North Carolina Piedmont. We'll see. Um, maybe, you know, if you get enough sort of this uh, lift from the fact that this moisture would be running up against higher terrain, that's possible. Start to wring it out a little bit, somewhat of an orographic feature where you bring that moisture up over hills and mountains and it helps to wring it out a little bit more efficiently. And some of these rain totals, yeah, we do see some yellows in here dark greens and yellow so you know two to eight inches overall um, not sure what's going on out here along the North Carolina Outer Banks maybe a different feature uh, it's just hard to say this is just one run and the models interpretation this is from this morning as to what may happen and then the good news here is you don't see a huge area of excessive rainfall that seems to be confined unfortunately to Texas so We'll watch it and see what's happening. I'll certainly be talking about it over the weekend. And if it does get named subtropical or tropical, and it's Bonnie, that would be the next name we already used Alex in January of all months. I might go out, see what's happening with it. It's such a small event. Kids are out of school. Of course, they're out of school on the weekend. I might take my young ones with me to show them some uh, wind-whipped rain. Is that a thing? I don't know. Uh, can't take them in a hurricane. That would be child endangerment, I do believe. It should be if it's not. All right. So the NOAA seasonal outlook came out today, and this is lengthy, which I applaud that, but I don't have time, nor do you want me to go through the whole thing. But basically, they're looking at a season uh, with 10 to 16, this is terrible telestration writing, named storms and uh, I think something like four to eight hurricanes or something like that. That's a horrible eight. And then one to four category three or higher hurricanes. And they cite the possibility that the Atlantic is cooling. Overall, what we call the AMO signal, Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation, and the La Nina may or may not be coming on. And there's a lot of uncertainty, basically. So the overall outlook is for more than likely going to have just a regular normal season, which should seem very busy if that indeed happens because it's been so below normal the last three years, if you think about it. 13, 14, and 15 really haven't had that much hurricane activity. So if we have eight hurricanes this year, even if we have six or seven, we've already had one. Let's say we have six more. Yes, Alex was a hurricane back in January. Uh, and three major hurricanes, a normal season roughly, you know, name storms and hurricanes wise, that's going to seem very busy considering the fact that we haven't seen much at all. And if the Atlantic does warm back up a little bit and we're not leaving this warm AMO cycle, it could be even busier than that. We won't really know until August and then it could really be busy. So this is an interesting year. A lot of things are, I think, going to happen after this season. Either we're going to continue with this active period or there's going to be more evidence to suggest that 
were starting to exit it. Uh, began in 1995, almost like a switch being thrown, and maybe it's ending just as quickly. So we'll see. All right, well, that's it for me for today. Have a good rest of your Friday. Thanks for tuning in. I will do a video update tomorrow and Sunday just to keep you apprised as to what's happening. You can follow along at HurricaneTrack.com, and, of course, we do have our app, Hurricane Impact. Search for it on the App Store or on Google Play, and everything we do is in there on the go on your iOS or Android device. And, you know, like I said, if this develops and hits land as something that's not 1 o'clock in the morning and a puff of clouds with a few raindrops, I might head out and just make sure everything's working for the real hurricane season that's coming uh, presumably right after June the 1st. So stay tuned for that as well. Be safe this Memorial Day weekend by all means, because like I said, we do want you back. It's going to be a busy season one way or the other, even if we have to talk about just educational stuff. I think you're going to like the products and the video blogs that we put out this year, and we want you to be able to enjoy that and not do something dumb this weekend to prevent you to do so. All right, there's my safety tip for the day. Mark Sutteth, HurricaneTrack.com. Have a great Friday. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.